What's good, John? It's Boy Ross back at again with another video. So I'm gonna check out Becky Lynch away for a long time. WWE star contract is potentially ending, and Roman Reigns come back in other wrestling news. Uh, I did see um, that uh, recently Becky Lynch had her um, last match. Um, with Liv Morgan on Monday Night Raw and apparently from what sources are saying she hasn't as of yet renewed her contract um, with uh, WWE I do think she will renew her contract what I do think potentially happened is she you know obviously was supposed to lose to uh, Rhea, Ripley at, uh, Rhea Ripley at Wrestle at this year's Wrestlemania which she did and then I think she was going to take a break but uh, same thing that uh, Seth Rollins did, but um, Rhea had got injured, so they kind of brought her back to kind of, you know, fill in that void and gap, and then they bridged it together with the Liv Morgan situation, and Liv Morgan has become the new women's world champion, and now I think uh, um, Becky Lynch is going to be able to actually take the break, because I think she wasn't supposed to have the championship but because the things happened with Rhea's injury, she kind of didn't have a chance to really take the break. So I think that's what we're getting now. She's probably going to be able to take her break and kind of, you know, recoup and, you know, recharge up. And um, I do think she will resign with WWE. I just don't see her going anywhere else. It doesn't even make sense for her to go to AEW. She's doing good right now in WWE. I think she will resign and it'll probably be for a lucrative contract. So we're going to see what's going on with that. Appreciate all the love and support. Let's get right into this video, man. Guys, it is WrestleMania here back with another video. Join us now as we look at this week's edition of Dynamite, as well as the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know, including Becky Lynch going away for a long time. Two WWE superstars still haven't re-signed. A former WWE star blasts Triple H's booking. Roman Reigns working hard to come back, Jade Cargill not happy as tag team champion, and much mm. more. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new videos on WrestleMania XL. As always, we won't recap the show, but just look at the good, the bad, and the downright ugly. As always, we start off with the good as number one, Swerve vs. Killswitch Banger. Mm. If AEW wanted to capitalize on fans who watched Double or Nothing tuning into Dynamite, they picked a fantastic match to get things started. Swerve Strickland vs. Killswitch was an action-packed brawl and a logical follow-up to Swerve's recent match against Christian Cage. Showing Strickland getting revenge on Christian's enforcer by cutting off one of his dreadlocks was a reminder that Swerve is no pushover. Number okay. two, there's a new sheriff in town. It looks like the Elite isn't going to have a free reign in AEW now that AEW President Tony Khan has appointed Christopher Daniels as interim EVP to implement his wishes. This was a smart move because it keeps Tony Khan off TV and it adds some conflict to the AEW vs Elite storyline. Uh. While the heels are far from finished, AEW can't fall into the trap WCW did with the NWO yeah. where they ran roughshod on WCW making its wrestlers look like prized chumps and creating zero excitement for months of destroying WCW stars. Number 3, Mercedes Monet Wrestles. Mercedes Monet wrestling twice in one week? Well, while it remains to be seen how often the new TBS champion will compete, this was a step in the right direction as AEW is paying her too much money for her yeah. to be a part time performer. Number 4, Joe Mentoring Hook has promised. And and that's good. That that is uh, that's definitely good that she is, you know, active in the ring. She had a match this past weekend and now she had another one, so that's good. I didn't get a chance to watch AEW last night. Uh we were kind of trying to get stuff situated with the stream on twitch shout out to everyone that was following us on and watching us on twitch but that is good news so i can i can appreciate that is samoa joe taking hook under his learning tree well sounds good to us as it could give hook the final bit of momentum he needs to break out throw in the potential for a joe hook tank team and an inevitable breakup and this storyline actually has some promise yeah number five killing two birds with one segment the last night's show features some unusually strong storytelling. Unusual in the sense that AEW stories have been all over the place lately, as see when Chris Statlander interrupted the Orange Cassidy Don Callis segment only to lead into the big reveal that Trent Barella joined Callis. There should never be a fixed number for matches, interviews and segments, nor a rule that says you can't address two storylines in one segment. Number 6. The End in the Beginning Dynamite achieved much last night, giving fans a strong follow-up to Double or Nothing while wasting no time setting things up for Forbidden Door. 
Number 7. Stockley and Statlander is a wise move. Chris Statlander is a wrestler who is in a tough spot as she's shown promise during her time in mm -hmm. AEW, but she's also been stymied by two major injuries that have sapped her momentum. Yeah. Now that AEW's women's division is finally improving, Statlander needs to make sure that she doesn't get lost in the crowd. One solution is pairing her with Stockley Hathaway, a great talker and a heat magnet who could turn her heel turn into something special. Statlander isn't a great talker, but she's no marble mouth either. Hopefully this pairing will get Statlander back on track as a solid upper card player and championship contender, and a worthy main event. The Forbidden Door Casino Gauntlet was a strong main event and one AEW needs to book weekly rather than occasionally. While many fans debate whether it's time for Will Ospreay to challenge for the AEW World Championship, mm. the match itself was a good bookend for an overall good show. There's nothing bad. There's definitely, I mean, Will Ospreay is the guy. I honestly hope they do something with MJF and and Swerve. That's the story I want to see only because if you guys remember a few months back, that interaction between Swerve and MJF in the back when MJF was the champion, that is what I want to see. I hope they do that. And ah, uh, they 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 can have they bruh, that can really ignite some excitement um between uh those both guys it can give more excitement for people that are fans of swerve and definitely people are going to be excited to see mjf just out there in the ring so i'm hoping they do that but we all know at some point at some point osprey don't know when maybe later on this year he will be aew world champion he's the guy he is truly the guy that is you know you know, the fans are completely behind and understandably so. Nothing downright ugly. This was one of the better dynamites in recent memory. It almost seemed as if Tony Khan read the criticism about the current product resembling 2019 WWE and probably realized he needs to set things up. We don't care what the motivation was as long as we get better shows like this. What'd you guys think of Dynamite last night? Let us know in the comments down below. Very now let's man. move on to the news. It was positive reception from WrestleMania, so that's good. We'll see. What y'all think about it down below in the comments. Now first story looks at Becky Lynch is going to be gone for a long time. At top of today's news is the question whether Becky Lynch is leaving the WWE. Fans are still asking since news broke that Lynch's WWE contract expires at the end of May and she's apparently in no rush to return. And now the Wrestling Observer Radio is adding to the intrigue with the following report. Becky Lynch is taking an extended leave. From what I was told it's not like a short period of time. She was looking for a long period of time out. It's probably if he's not on the road, Seth Rollins. It makes sense for her to not be on the road and they can't be hurting for money where they need it right now. Yeah. And you know, maybe she's looking for other things or maybe she's not. She'll be a free agent as a couple of days from now. As Meltzer mentioned, the timing is right for Lynch to enjoy time with Seth Rollins as he recovers from his various injuries. In addition, Lynch may want to pursue other opportunities such as Hollywood. The man will likely be courted by AEW once her contract expires, but Ringside News discussed a recent appearance by AEW President Tony Khan on The Rich Eisen Show where he said he can't speak with Lynch yet as it would be contract tampering. As we noted earlier this week, Lynch will likely receive the biggest contract of any yep. female wrestler currently working. Whether it happens in AEW or WWE remains to be seen. The WWE has the advantages of being where Lynch's husband works, a long time home and more stability than AEW. On the other hand, AEW could offer her more money and it would give her fresh opponents to work with. When do you think we'll see Becky Lynch again? Let us know in the comments down below. Like I said, she's not going anywhere, bro. Seth ain't going nowhere. She not going anywhere. They're going to take time off. They can do that. She was supposed to take time off allegedly after she lost to Rhea at WrestleMania. They obviously brought her back, you know, you know, for, you know, Rhea get injured. And now, you know, they got the Liv Morgan story going. So she, she deserves the break. She do. Just like Seth Rollins deserved a break. So when they do come back. It's gonna be it's gonna be monumental. So hey, Becky get her break. She deserves it. Rest up with her husband. And I'm WWE is not letting her go. <laughs> what? They would be stupid to let her walk away. WWE is not doing that. Fucking Triple H is Triple H, you know, is not letting that happen. So she'll be fine. Next up, two WWE superstars still haven't re-signed. Becky Lynch isn't the only WWE female superstar whose contract is set to expire. Fightful Select reports veteran grappler Natalia hasn't signed a new deal. Meltzer weighed in during an episode of Wrestling Observer Radio saying, yeah, she hasn't signed a new deal. I don't know if that's anything to be alarmed over or anything like that, but that is the situation. While Natalia is no longer a main event player, her skills and veteran status make her an asset whether she competes in singles matches or tag team competition. 
If she chooses to do so, she would have no problem finding work outside the WWE. That'd be crazy if she doesn't resign. I mean, granted, they haven't really been doing much with Natalia anyway, but I do think she is, you know, important, important, integral, an integral, important part of getting the, the women, you know, that especially transitioning from NXT to the main roster or whoever WWE tries to pick up, you know, getting them used to their system. I, I do feel like she's probably a really good trainer behind the scenes, so... Uh, it'll be interesting to see if they do keep her. I think she is a good asset. I know on, on screen they hadn't really used her in a meaningful way in a very long time. But I do feel like she would be a great asset as a producer or someone in the back helping the ladies, you know, get into WWE smoothly and training them. So, I don't know. We'll see what happens with that. WWE's usual habit of letting talent contracts expire has continued as Chad Gable's WWE deal is set to expire next week. This news comes courtesy of Fightful Select, who state that no deal has been reached and Gable is expected to get interest from across the industry. Fightful's report adds that they've heard that there'll be a strong push from talent in various outside companies to vouch for him to be signed. Gable is currently one of the top heels on Raw and it'd be a significant blow for WWE if Gable walks out the door. Next up- Gable's not going on anywhere either. <laughs> I just want y'all to know. Gable's not going anywhere. They're doing something with Chad Gable and they've made him the most interesting he has been in a very long time. He's in a good segment right now with Alpha Academy. Like, no. No. They're not letting him go. He, he's going to resign. And they're going to continue to keep pushing him. Hell, at one point, I could possibly see this guy maybe being Intercontinental Champion as a heel. I can't... I, and, I mean, I, they've been teasing him aligning with the creed brothers it's gonna happen they're not letting this guy go there's no way you let this guy go adam cole aew world champion there's interesting rumors from fight force like that aew were considering putting the aew world heavyweight championship on adam cole the patron site recently reported there were plans for mjf and adam cole to wrestle in late 2023 and adam cole was considered for a possible title victory however cole's injury set off a chain uh... of events that are still felt today Cole's injury sidelined AEW's original plans for the Cole vs MJF program, which reportedly would have led to an earlier reveal of the Devil's identity. Next up, a former WWE star Black. I don't know, because it was basically a double turn. If you was to do that, it would have to be obviously people that MJF has crossed and done wrong, aligning themselves with Adam Cole. It would work. It would work. If we get Adam Cole the most heel heat because he turned on MJF. And it would make sense because MJF, he, you know, he's he's paying for his sins. I think it could have worked. And I think if they would have went that route, I, I don't think people would have tripped. Having Adam Cole as the AEW world champion for a while. And now you have MJF trying to get his revenge, going through all the obstacles. I think that would have worked. Ask Triple H's booking. Much like the former WWE superstar Ryback, the baddest woman on the planet never seems at a loss for words when complaining oh about the boy. WWE. A new excerpt from a latest memoir, My Fight, shows Rousey's frustrations with the WWE and apparently Triple H's booking. Listen, I told you I'd be here until SummerSlam, I said, and I'm a woman of my word, but I'm done after this. All I wanted when I got into this business was to tag with Shayna, have her turn on me, then put her over before I leave. We have until SummerSlam to make that happen. After that, I'm done being associated with this minimum effort, lazy ass shit show. I could feel my lip quivering as I was so worked up, it took everything I had to hold back tears. He shook his head like someone who silently shared my frustration. Rousey also shared an exchange she had with Triple H that seemed to cast him in a favorable light. Okay, I get it, he said. I get it. I nodded, indicating I said my piece. I moved to leave when he stretched out his hand. I thought to shake mine. Instead, he leaned in, gently touching my arm. He dipped his head, looking up at me. His tone shifted from authority figure to friend. But how are you, he said sincerely. I burst into tears, not just crying, but bawling. I'm so tired, I said. I'm so tired that I feel like it's changing my personality. I'm so much more anxious, stressed, negative, like butter scraped over too much bread. Ronda Rousey's time in the WWE was mm. apparently miserable, at least judging from Rousey's comments in a book and interviews promoting a book. But what do you guys think of Rousey's take on WWE's booking? Do you think she was right criticizing Triple H? Let us know in the comments down below. Hey man, look. It didn't work out, but you can tell Triple H cared. And granted, we don't know how much, you know, how much of that involved Vince 
or whatnot, how much of that, you know, Vince had control over what was being, what we saw on television. Obviously, Triple H had, con had some control, but Vince still may have had a little bit more power, obviously. But you can tell he cared, and he understood, you know? So, I mean, it's just one of those type of things. That Triple H is giving the vibes, especially as of late, as someone that cares about what the wrestlers are going through. I mean, he didn't have to ask, how you doing? You know, he cared. So, you know, it's unfortunate things happened the way they did with Ronda Rousey. You know, I, I once again, I do think she had a tough time understanding the business at hand. She may have been a bona fide star, but I just feel like she didn't really truly understand how the business worked, especially on the aspect of the fans turning on her. It's part of part of wrestling. But, you know, hey, it is what it is. You know, you, you know move both parties separated move there you know their separate ways and you know that's all you can do and just keep moving forward next up roman reigns working hard to come back when will roman reigns return to wwe the universe has been asking for reigns ever since solo sokoa assumed control of the bloodline reigns who was last seen at wrestlemania 40 when he dropped the wwe undisputed championship to cody rhodes recently appeared in a training yeah, video uploaded by bodybuilder extraordinaire kai green Green posted the following message with the clips of Roman in the gym training. Rise up, keep pushing, keep dreaming, and never let self-doubt or fear stop you. This is your journey. The pursuit of greatness is within grasp. All you have to do is go out there and earn it. You'd shout out to Roman Reigns for tagging me in on this training session. Does this mean that Roman is getting ready to return to the ring? It could be, but it also could be a sign of how devoted Roman is to training, whether it's for Hollywood or WWE. But speaking on his Hollywood venture, the filming for Good Fortune is about wrapping up. So could this mean that we see Reigns make an early return? Let us know in the comments down below. Hey bro, whenever he comes back is up. <laughs> I just want y'all to know. Whenever Roman Reigns makes his return, it's up. That's it. That's all that's all I have to say is it's up. It's it's gonna be the his that pop from the crowd is going to be monumental. I can't wait. Can't wait. And finally, is Jade Cargill not happy about being Tag Team Champion? And last but not least, how does Jade Cargill feel about being one half of the WWE Women's Tag Team Champions? Cargill, who enjoyed an incredible undefeated streak in AEW as its TBS Champion, might see a Tag Team title win as a step down. However, that doesn't seem to be the case. Cargill discussed her feelings during a chat with Title Sports Network, revealing, Amazing, it wasn't something that was in my cards or my deck. Came out the blue. But teaming with the EST, we're unstoppable. Who's gonna beat us? Well, let's really think about it right now. No one. No one. So we knew it was coming. We knew that, you know, we had phenomenal. The Kabuki Warriors are great. You know, they held the belts down, but it's our time. Akar girl seems to be in the ideal position as she's getting plenty of TV time while also working alongside one of the industry's best. Perhaps she was looking for something bigger in the WWE, but the Women's Tag Team Championship seems like a good start. Hey, well, there you have it, folks. Our look at Dynamite. She's on her way. As simple as that. I, I do see her maybe, depending if everything goes right, I do see her main eventing uh, next year's WrestleMania, at least night one with Bianca Belair. If they do this right, they have something here. So comment down below. Let me know. Do you guys think Becky Lynch is re-signing with WWE? Also, did you guys enjoy last night's episode of AEW? And are you guys excited to see Roman Reigns return? Because boy... It's, it's, it's about to be something truly impressive. So I'm I'm looking forward to it, man. I cannot wait to see wherever he returns at. The crowd's going to lose their shit. I'm going to lose my shit. It's going to be a fun time. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on the channel. Road to 150K. And I'm still young. Ah, damn. I, I fucked it up. I fucked up, man. I'm, I'm just, I'm out of it, man. I, I'm out of it. Y'all already know my outro, man. I'm out. Peace. <laughs>